Hello, warm welcome to you all as we gather together for worship on this Palm Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Just a few announcements for you today. A reminder that today is the last day that social ministry will be accepting donations for Easter meals for those who are in need in our community. If you'd still like to contribute a monetary donation or a ham, uh, you need to get those to the church office today or early Monday morning so that they can be distributed. Today is also the last day to get your reservation in for the Good Friday Fish Dinner. If you'd like to come out for that, please be sure to call the church office and get your reservation in or drop it off Monday morning. Scholarship applications are now available. You can find copies on the church website. You can download it from there. Uh, they're also available in the back window in the church. And please see the information about Scholarship's upcoming Dine and Donate event on April 2nd at the Slate, and you'll find more information about that in the newsletter. Social Ministry will be having a pie sale, uh, selling their famous molasses crumb and cherry pies. Those orders are due by April 14th with a pickup on the 21st. Normally we do a pie sale in coordination with the Plant Yard Bake Sale, but it's, it's gotten to the point where it's really too much to try and do all of that at once. Now that's not to say that there won't be pies at the bake sale, um, but they're doing a separate pie sale with taking orders in April in order to try and spread out the work to make it a little more manageable. So if you would like your you know, favorite molasses crumb, please be sure to order those in April to get make sure that you get one. And lastly, a reminder that we are accepting applications for the position of office administrator. With Kelly's recent announcement that she will be retiring at the end of April, uh, we need to fill that position. So if you're interested or know of someone who's interested, uh, please contact the church office and we can get you more information. And now let us take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to some beautiful prelude music.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along the way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The, the Lord, Lord needs it. it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice, for all the deeds of power that he, they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. <laughs> Thank 
unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and the officers of the temple police about how he might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Most loving God, we confess that we have often looked for ways to betray you by our thoughts, words, and deeds. We have been blinded by our greed for material things and by our desires to be important. Have mercy on us. Forgive us for the wrong we have done, and instill in us a will to take up our cross and follow Christ. Have faith. God does not forsake those who turn to him in repentance, nor does he abandon them, but instead God raises them up to new life through the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table, and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God come. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. A dispute also arose among those as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one at the table, but I am, I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trial, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? No, no not, not a thing. thing. But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. Look, Lord, look, look. Here are two swords. It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them, about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will be yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became the great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed One, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Gather your people around the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renew your good creation, and protect the balance of life on earth. Encourage the work of foresters, scientists, arborists, gardeners, and river keepers. We pray for the health of pollinating insects, songbirds, and native plants. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislators, and local governments will serve with integrity and compassion. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Make a way for refugees and asylum seekers. Reunite families enduring separation. We pray for any who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love. And we ask that you would heal all those who are ill especially those we name before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Give energy and joy to our pastors, deacons, worship leaders, and musicians. Bless baptismal candidates, their sponsors, confirmands, and teachers. Watch over those who travel. 
Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the membership of this congregation. This week especially, we lift up before you Linda Oswald, the Dave Ott family, Art and Lorraine Paulus, Rebecca Paulus, Jim and Linda Painter, Elena, the Elena Perry family, and George and Jerry Petrushka. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Let us pray for the prison ministry and the inmates and their families in the Northampton, Monroe, and Warren County prisons. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. This week we pray for the congregation of St. Luke's Church in Greeley and Pastor Don Beck. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Blessed one, our times are in your hand. Sustain us in discipleship throughout our lives and receive us into everlasting life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, it is with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man. When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the sleeve of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this! And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him. Have you come out with swords and clubs, as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled the fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, Woman I, do I do not know, know him. him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Are, Are you then the Son of God? You say that I am. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips.
quickly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate, they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put on an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city, and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. And if they do not, when the wood is green, what will happen when it, when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He, he saved, saved others, let him save himself, if he, he is the Messiah of God, God his chosen one. one. The soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, 
and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. trusting in God's promise of forgiveness and new life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.